So back to the location of Norwich City Station, the former location of it, and there's one of the bridges that was built for the station. You can see the date on it, which is 1882. And here, this point marks more or less where the river used to be tidal. It's no longer tidal at this point because there's a, now a uh, so it stops being tidal down here, and which will shortly be seen. But one important thing I think I need to say about East Anglia is that it, in, when the Romans came here, it didn't look like it does today. Um, to the north, the wash was about double the size and the Yar River, for example, was much, much bigger. And places, for example, such as Barton Broad, which to a large extent were filled in by water in medieval times, had actually been part of the rivers which uh, went into the North Sea. So it was much, uh, it was much more uh, river traffic then than there could be today. And one of the effects of this was just to bring the Vikings here, for example. Uh, they went up the, the rivers as far as they could get, and as far as I could get was more or less Norwich, and that is why they're here. The river, of course, also played a very important part in trade. So it was Norwich grew on the basis of the wool industry uh, to a large extent in medieval times and this was then exported and this contributed to Norwich being, for example, at the time William the Conqueror, it was the third largest town in the British Isles to become the second largest and then competing for many hundreds, well, maybe tens, shall we say, years, <laughs> lots of tens, uh, with Bristol to be the second largest town in the British Isles. This is New Mill Sluice, and according to the sign, it's a air compressor station which is water powered. And from here, the river is tidal. And it's moving much faster here, but of course it would be because of the, the fall we just had there. Not a particularly big fall, but it's a little one. Now, uh, when I came here, I was working on the outskirts, almost in the countryside, and I bought a place out there. And now I regret it because at the time I was sort of work orientated, not like today when I'm sort of totally unwork orientated. And I wanted to be close to the job. Even my boss said to me, don't do it, wait and find out. And I said, no, that's what I want. And I was thinking, well, what happens if I have to come in at two o'clock in the morning? And I was sort of judging the standards of work, potential work there is what I'd been used to previously. Um, things like that though just didn't happen. And uh, I could have, with the money, easily have bought a place around here. And, okay, it'd been smaller than what I got. But you know, today, I'd very much appreciate it. And of course, then, it would have been some distance to get to work every morning, and maybe I wouldn't have fancied uh, such a long walk. Uh, I do like to walk to work, but when it's pouring with rain, it's not much uh, fun. But I think these properties alongside the river are really very pleasant and also there's this atmosphere within Norwich itself at night or even during the day but there's this wonderful medieval feeling to it which is uh, very pleasant. So we have a bridge, metal bridge dating back to 1804 and next to it we have Bulletin, Bulletin Sons Anchor Brewery. been walking along the northern side of the river and some on the south but here's a view across the north and I very much appreciate the way these houses have been built although they're new they uh, adopted a style which uh, suggests something to me it's even something Hanseatic about it but um, it's, it's very much 
within the idea of uh, Norwich as a uh, ancient port, if you like. Um, and uh, here, this area used to be an island. It's, and uh, again, it's been drained. It's an island in the river. And the word Coslana, it's Coslana, which uh, I think it means island with reeds, or no, without reeds, it's one of the, one of the two uh, in Old Norse. And sometimes you get buildings which are horrible, like this one here on the right, then, which is old. To me, it looks as though it's probably oh, no, the 1930s, it might be wrong with that. It might be later. And then you get this wonderful architecture up there. I think that's, I, I really like glass. I think it looks great in this type of uh, environment. Great place to live, really, but unfortunately the, the balconies are on the northern side, so not going to get much sun there. Now at this point here, I've got a bit of a problem if you want to follow the river because there's no way to do it in the southern bank because it comes to a dead end down there and you can see there's no way to do it in the northern bank either. So we'll, we'll just go on this street here, go on the northern bank, then we join it a little later. So there we've got a sign. With the, Number one bikeway, you go to Reefham, which you can see another film of mine, which is just over 20 kilometers from here. And there's the Golden Star. Isn't that a wonderful house? I suspect that's 18th century. And so, we'll turn up here into Colgate. Now, the word gate in Norse means way. Gart. And we see that in many places in the Viking heritage. Uh, lots of places in York, for example, with that type of name. So we see some of the typical architecture of Norwich here, which is uh, brick and flint. Now, there's no uh, stone here which is usable for construction purposes so that's why you see so much flint indeed uh, that's why the stone was brought from Caen in France when the cathedral was built I'll be talking about that later uh, 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 these old buildings are actually really attractive these here which is Victorian so keen on that's one of the buildings of Aviva, who have so far refused to pay for my motorhome insurance. Uh, but I'm sure I'll be returning to that one as well later. I hope I don't have to warn other people about what happened to me on that front. Here, next to the church, I'm standing on some gravestones. So I should really get off them. So we've got a date. Well, if we have, I can't see it. The house we see there was built in the middle of the 16th century by one Henry Bacon who became Sheriff of Norwich around 1548 or thereabouts during the reign of Edward VI and uh, it does have some kind of association with the Kent's Rebellion but I'm not certain exactly what. Of course many of the areas around here were actually fought over during that, uh, that revolt and I suspect there were uh, damage, there was damage, considerable damage actually done at the time. Now turning up this street though, this street is much older, it dates the 10th century. It's part of the uh, Viking um, defensive ramparts were here. Of course, uh, unfortunately, we don't see anything from that period. Now, there's, there's St George's Barbershop, which 
I went to and very very friendly air person who runs that and he's got a very interesting decor inside which um, uh, anyway I won't say more about that. <laughs> The site, which I have now in front of me, used to be home to a factory. In 1876, a Nordic shoe factory was built there, and this was the largest shoe producer in the United Kingdom at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries. And it produced up to about 200,000 pairs of shoes per year, and it was a significant employer. Unfortunately, as things went in the 1970s, it was forced to close, the factory was torn down and housing, as you see, and some offices as well were put up in its place. So why build a shoe factory on this spot? The reason is that this area was known for the leather trade and shoe manufacture. And uh, it was, in a way, it was actually encouraged in the 19th century as the linen, cloth, wool trade went away. And it was, it was quite successful because it employed lots of people. Most people were working, there were artisans, they were working workshops at home. And uh, the owners of Norwich, I'm sure, had the idea, or they probably started out the same way, but their business grew and eventually was able to employ people who were, were doing it at home and all the rest of it and grew in that, in that way. They had the possibility of buying bulk, of marketing the products and that's the reason for its success. Norwich became wealthy in the Middle Ages because of the cloth trade but this, in turn, led to higher taxation and many people who lived here, worked here, actually left because of the taxation. This caused a decline. A second burst of wealth came later when immigrants from Holland, largely, uh, who were persecuted, they brought their skills with them and once again, so Norwich had a second boom with woolens and the things of this nature. There's a very important lesson there though for left-wing ideology is that the more you tax something the less money you actually collect through taxation.